Arab leaders don't want the Mahdi to come. Why? It's because what the Mahdi represents. The Mahdi will bring about a societal change and reform in Muslim society which will change the Ummah completely. He will destroy the status quo in regards to the Muslims. He will change the order of the world, where it is filled with injustice, and he will fill it with justice. He will bring about a huge change that will upend the status quo for Muslims in the region. The current status quo in the region is that which superpower can we align ourselves to? In the Gulf region, most Arab countries have aligned themselves to the U.S., yet China and Russia have been creeping in slowly making their nest in the Gulf. Obviously, America doesn't like that and has been fighting and convincing its allies to not go into the Chinese camp, one of which is Saudi Arabia. So Muslim countries always side with foreign powers and none of these foreign powers are Muslim. Yet what the Mahdi represents is an emerging Muslim power that will be able to take on the whole world. A superpower in its own regards with more than a billion Muslim ready to defend themselves. And that terrifies many Arab leaders. It's because they love the state they are in. They love the nightclubs, the cinema, the Western freedom. They want to open themselves up to the world and show how they can become like them more. Each Muslim leader wants to compete with each other in how quickly they can remove Islam from their nation. Islam isn't synonymous with what they want as their goal. Their goal is to live within the status quo and make their nations more open to Western or Eastern democracy, whichever way they want to swing. To do so, they have filled the hearts of the citizens with nationalism. They have replaced the Islamic identity with nationalism and what the Mahdi will do is that he will undo any and all sort of nationalism or source of isms and replace it with the Islamic identity. He will stop the reliance on non-Muslim foreign powers and forge a native Muslim power that will unite Muslims across the world, a nation based on the Sharia. This nation will be very powerful. Its state will be the envy of all the nations in the world because it will bring about such justice that the leaders of all the other nation states who have done so many injustices in the past will be against them. No Muslim leader in this day and age will allow that to happen. Another reason is because of the power he will command because of his character, because of his goal. He will attract Muslims from different nations in his army. And what that will do is essentially decrease Muslim nations' powers. There may be doctors, civilians, nurses, soldiers, and all sort of people leaving their lands to join his army. There will be people of different nationalities and there may be even some non-Muslim followers who truly believe that he is a messiah and he is on the path for good. We cannot rule out any different possibilities and that will present a loss to these Muslim leaders. Though there may be some Muslim leaders that will join him, but they are only a few of us. Majority of them will actively try to go against him trying to please the foreign masters. Because there is also a hadith where before the black flags of Khorasan come, there will be another Muslim army that will chase and try to defeat him, most likely because he will pose a threat to them. And this will happen based on the geopolitical and social event of today and the hadith of the past that detail the rise of the Mahdi.